Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus, and today we're with Brian J. Walker of Brian Strive in Theater, and we're going to discuss sword and sandal cinema. Greetings and welcome, Brian. How are you? I'm well tonight, Hercules. How are you? I'm doing great. I've had a very long day today. It started early in the morning and it has not stopped. And um, when I wasn't dealing with things in person, I'm dealing with things on the telephone. Uh, so uh, it's going to continue till midnight. Even one of our um, co-hosts on uh, Sword and Sandal Cinema, Ron Carson, is dropping by after 1030 tonight for a little while, too. So oh, great. it's a long day. And, it's, and I still got to finish my workout, too. Uh, yes, it has been a long day. I have a, my biggest event of the year on campus is tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, and I'm very worried about it. I put a lot of time and effort into it, but ultimately, um, you, you know, it, it has to be attended by somebody. And, and I, uh, I, I'm putting this on for students uh, to meet the prospective landlords. And it, it's been, uh, well, I, I guess that uh, COVID has made things worse, but over the last few years, it's been harder and harder to get students to turn out for anything. Yes. E even with incentives. I mean, you, you can, you back in the old days, all I had to do was to buy a stack of pizzas that were as tall as I am. And, and I'm serious. And, and then I would have, I I would have it. Uh, but it is not that easy anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. I I've worked in education and I'm still involved with libraries and we're having a difficult time getting people back into the you know, libraries now because everything's being done with uh, Zoom and uh, people are used to Zooming. So, you know, why come in if uh, you can Zoom? Right. Well, um, I, I have uh, some specific reasons why students should come uh, to this housing fair uh, that I've devised, but I, I've spent weeks and weeks on it. and. I've been out uh, most every night over the last two weeks uh, talking to students in the residence halls. Um, and I, I'd hate to think that you know, this was all for nothing. So uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really hoping that it'll, pe people will turn out for it. And I, I think that, uh, I think I'll get a decent crowd. Yeah, I, I think you'll get a decent crowd too. And I hope that it's uh, more successful than you uh, envisioned. Uh, that wouldn't take much, but yes. <laughs> so, I, it's not that I haven't had a flop before, but I, I really need a I, need, I really need a hit, you know, at this point, or or at least you know I at least need to get to second base, you know, if nothing else. Um, is this going to be recorded? This event? Uh, no, no, it's not. Um, there was no way to. To do it effectively and um i charged uh, landlords for this event because okay. i, I uh, all the support but I, I had 15 posters printed and it cost me over 600 dollars. and that wow. was that was just for posters i mean i've had banners made other marketing support um it, I've, I've run ads in the student newspaper um it's expensive i mean it, it caught and then, then the catering bills like hundreds of dollars you know, because uh, I have to have tables set up, uh, linens, yes. you know, things like that. It's just, it's so expensive. And I just don't have the uh, budget, um, you know, uh, in my, you know, yearly allocation to to lay out three or $4,000, you know, for for one event, you know, I mean, no matter how important it is. That's important, yeah. I used to oh, it is, it is there, so I know what that's like to pull something like that together and, uh how much work it is so that's awesome that you're doing that it is and i i don't want it to fail <laughs> <laughs> understandable <laughs> uh but tonight uh yeah we're going to talk about lou ferrigno uh he, he's our man of the hour he, it's his birthday today he's 70 years birthday. old wow yeah, I he, met him actually uh, several times in the past when i had my uh, fringe uh, uh tv show um, we used to go to a lot of the conventions, the science fiction conventions, the horror conventions, the comic book uh, conventions, and uh, Lou was a frequent uh, guest. So um, uh, we'd filmed him a couple of times. Unfortunately, he didn't make it to the TV show, 
uh, but uh, he was always very affable, very pleasant, and always very large, whereas other uh, bodybuilders seemed to lose body mass. He kept it on, in, you know, even in his uh, 50s and uh, 60s. He did. Um, if you uh, go back and look at the, the work that he's done in film and television, uh, he, you know, he's he's been on a number. He's been in a number of series. Uh, he was mm -hmm. on the, the King of Queens in a recur recurring role. Um, I think he made about twenty or so appearances on it. Wow! And you know, in the King of Queens, he's probably about fifty or so, but but you know, it still looks you know, like he did when he was thirty. You know, he, he still looks good uh, in the King of Queens. And I've, I've watched a number of his movies over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, as a rewatch is probably a better way to put it. Yeah, I liked uh, I liked his two Hercules movies. We've talked about those uh, before. Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't like them. I love them. I think they're great. You know, they're. Uh, well, I, yeah, I've got I've got to say um, I, it was not. You know, sometimes if you're watching a film and you're doing it for a purpose, uh, other than just entertainment, it becomes a chore. And um, his uh, peplums are a lot of fun to watch. There's yes. a lot of action. There's a lot of action going on. Uh, they're cast well. They've got they've got you know Sybil Danning. Um, yes. In, she's in Hercules and she's in the Seven Magnificent Gladiators. Um, and Brad Harris is in both of them as well. Uh, Dan Vadis is in the Seven uh, Magnific Magnificent Gladiators. Uh, there's some really good uh, casting going on. Uh, the a lot of it, it, you know, is shot you know around ruins, so you know, it looks good, you know, on camera. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, especially for the Seven Magnificent Gladiators, a lot of it's shot at night, and I, I couldn't really find out why. Um, I, I would love, there's got to be a reason for it, and I would love to know why. I don't know if it's because night means that you don't have to obscure more modern aspects of what might have been on screen, <clears throat> which is possible. It is possible. You know, uh, but uh, it, 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 the night scenes are lit well enough so that you can see what's going on, and, and that's sort of the hallmark of a decent production. You know, uh, it, sometimes you know, if you're watching a, you know, an old low budget film, it'll look like it's been lit by a flashlight or something like that. And these aren't. I mean, they, they look they look good. But but the lighting is is subtle, even though it's night. Um, sometimes in night shots, if uh, if it's a decent production, they'll actually overdo it. And you can see shadows and everything and you can see where the lights are crossing um, you, uh, with uh, the Seven Magnificent Gladiators, which was uh, directed by Bruno Mattei, who's done a number, of, who had done, I should say, a number of uh, low budget movies, lower budget, I should say, movies throughout his career. Um, you know, well-known Italian director. Um, mm. he, he does a good job with it. You can tell that it's, it's, it's been, you know, the crew is experienced because it looks good. And so the, the movie, the, the uh, Seven Magnificent Gladiators, is so much fun too. Uh, there, it doesn't really drag um, in any specific spot. That can happen with action movies, you know. Between action sequences, sometimes there's just a lot of exposition and maybe a little bit of drama or something like that. But uh, it doesn't drag at all. It just it keeps rolling right along. And it's it's my length too. I love movies that are ninety minutes or less. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's if that says more about you know the movie or my attention span. Um, but I, I to tell you the truth, I think most movies could fit inside ninety minutes, and you wouldn't really miss much of anything. You wouldn't miss a whole lot of plot points or anything like that. I just saw my wife and I saw a movie, uh, The Eternals, uh, uh, one of the Marvel movies recently. Yes. That was uh, a little bit more than two and a half hours. Oh, that, that's uh, that, that's that's long for me. It was long, but in a way, it wasn't long enough. Um, they they introduced a lot of uh, character. I, I enjoyed the movie. A lot of people didn't, mm -hmm. but I, I happened to enjoy it. I've been a fan of uh, Jack Kirby's creation since uh, the 70s. So I've been there since the beginning. And uh, I collected the comic books over the years. They disappear for a while. They come back, the, the Eternal. So I was looking forward to this movie. I never thought it would get made. 
so uh, two and a half hours wasn't enough. And that was a sentiment that was echoed by many people who felt it would have been better served as a six hour TV series or something rather than a two and a half hour movie. Uh, but there was so much crammed into that movie that uh, unless you had like some background, uh, mm. it, it could have been difficult to follow for some uh, people. You know, um, the uh, I watched uh, Halloween Kills on uh, Peacock uh, okay. a few weeks ago, and <clears throat> it's the first um, movie that I have streamed in my home that uh, simultaneously was released in theaters. And, and um, I got to say, I, I actually, I streamed it twice. <laughs> uh, but because we have the Peacock app. And mm -hmm. um, I got to tell you, I really like the experience. I, I, yes. it, if that were available to me, I hate to say it, but I would probably so rarely go to a theater. Um, well, I, I haven't, gosh, you know, I haven't been to a theater since COVID, you know, uh, started. I, I, I like this. You know, I like the communal aspect of going to, to see you know, uh, an event in uh, the theater, especially you know, with some of the live events that Fathom uh, does. Now, some I like turning out for those, and I love IMAX. Um, you can I, I'll watch anything on an IMAX screen, you know. Yeah, IMAX is awesome. And I have an IMAX years ago, and it was cosmic on the IMAX uh, screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we've seen uh, a number of movies on IMAX, but we also watched this documentary on the Coral Reef. Uh, yes, 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 I've it seen it. Was, like it was stunning. Uh, just the, the colors and the underwater uh, shots. It was only 45 minutes long, I think, or something like that. But it was just, it was beautiful to watch. It was just stunning. And um, I, I don't know, you know a great deal about marine life or anything like that, but I, I was riveted by it. And I, I guess, I guess that tells you how easy it is to entertain me as long as long as I'm seeing pretty images, I'm okay. <laughs> I, I like so I found it really enjoyable. I like streaming from home too. And uh, yeah. again, everyone's used to being home now watching things on their computer. Uh, so we were, we've been talking about that route because uh, some of the things are like for Marvel, let's say, they're on Disney Plus uh, fairly quickly. That's so we true. saw um, we saw Black Widow on uh, our TVs at home and that was a great experience. So uh, we're Eternals again, I was waiting for a very long time to see it. So we went to the theater before COVID we used to go once a month with our son to see a superhero movie. That was something we all liked, you know so we did that together. Um, our son didn't want to come for this uh, uh, superhero movie. So my wife and I just went. Mm. Well, I, um, you know, our, our house now is about a quarter of a century old. Uh, we bought it new. And I, um, I did this all myself, so it's, it's all my labor. Um, but I, pre-Bluetooth, I wired the entire family room for sound. Oh, I've, wow. I have uh, four in-wall speakers. I've got two in-ceiling speakers to sort of handle uh, you know, that mid-range, the dialogue. And then I've got a subwoofer. Um, and, and then I've got a... You know, a, a fairly large, I don't know, like 60 inch or so uh, television in the family room. And uh, the most comfortable couch I've ever owned, which is uh, a lazy boy recliner uh, couch. And if you darken the room and, you know, turn on that movie, it it is so much better than being in the theater. It's, it's so much more comfortable. And my, my bladder is the size of a dime. And I know this is TMI. Uh, but you know, like I, true for me, yeah. if, if I'm not completely dehydrated, I'm going to have to stop. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have to run out and, and go to the restroom at some point. And it's so nice just being able to pause for a few minutes and, and, and get a drink or something, you know, uh, something to eat or popcorn or, or just to run to the restroom. Um, I do like that aspect about being at home. I, I miss the communal part of it, though, because yeah. you, usually if we go out to a movie, um, we're meeting like people there. Um, we, we've got some friends that we will often, well, we used to um, you know, go to the movies with. I miss that part of it because we would have, it was, it was a night out. We'd have dinner beforehand mm -hmm. uh, and, and get to talk with people we don't get to see every day. And I miss that part of it. 
I don't miss sitting in a you know, uh, cold and or hot theater. Um, I mean, theaters today are so much better than what we grew up with. Remember the old grind houses that you yeah, used to go to? Yeah. It was so cheap to get in. It might have been 50 cents or a dollar, you know, uh, but your feet stuck to the floor. The, yes. uh, the chairs had, were, were padded during the Coolidge administration and had never been touched again. They'd never been cleaned or, or, or stuffed with more horse hair or anything. They were just so uncomfortable. You didn't care, though, because you were young and it only cost like a buck to get in. Right. And you got some great movies. But nobody would put up with that now. So no. No. It's, I, find, I, I find it charming, but I probably wouldn't put up with that now either. So. We, we had air conditioning and uh, watching the Eternals. It was very cold. So both my wife and myself put our hands in our sleeves because mm -hmm. it was really, really cold. And the mask well, kept and, their for them. Well, and you, you know, sometimes um, we went, we saw a movie at an old theater downtown, which is unfortunately had, has since closed. And we saw it in the winter, but somehow it was colder in the theater than it was outside. I never quite figured out how they made that work in February, but they did. <laughs> it, was, it was freezing in there. And, and I, you know, I sat with, you know, I kind of I pulled my hands, you know, mm -hmm. into my sweatshirt <laughs> and my teeth chattered the whole time i mean it was a great movie i can't remember what it was or right offhand but i thought you know gosh you know i i, I don't think i want this experience again. <laughs> well, I'm, old. I'm old i need some comfort it's like amazon we, we've talked about this you know you you can get about anything from uh, amazon and it's very convenient uh, to get things uh, so easily from amazon and ebay and and uh, a place like that but it's taken away the the whole hunt aspect if you're looking for something and where can i look you know i'll look here i'll look there i'll go in these old stores i'll and um it, it's good that it's easy to find an item um that you're looking for and this is true for old books too i remember when it would take like a year and like lots of money to find a particular volume and i had to go to antiquarian bookstores and to these uh, stores that ordered things from all over the planet. Uh, and there was such a satisfaction in finally getting the book. And now that goes away in two minutes. It's like, oh, okay, there it is. But on the other hand, when you went into that store to, to, to find this elusive book, you probably picked up a couple of other things too. Yes, yeah. That you, never, that you never would have experienced if you hadn't been browsing. Right. And that's the problem I have with online. It's great if... And I, I resort to it all the time. Uh, you know, I, I have uh, four cats and uh, they are well fed and finicky at this point. Sometimes it's hard to find uh, some of the food that they eat mm -hmm. um, and I'll have to order it. So I don't, right. if, it's, if it's a necessity, I think it's okay. But, but if it's something that I'm just interested in, if it's something for my hobby or if I just want to browse, I would much rather go into a brick and mortar. Um, doing it online, it, it's just, ugh, you know, it, it's just not the same. You don't get, you don't, it, there's no tactile response to anything. You can't touch anything. You can't examine it. You know, especially if you're looking at something older, if, if you're, um, you know, uh, my partner and I were talking uh, earlier today about the supply chain and all of these, you know, the, the media keeps telling us that, you know, your, your Christmas is going to be ruined by uh, the fact that your shipment from China is tied up. Well, don't buy that. Don't buy that stuff. Then look for something else. Go to Etsy. You know, look for something handcrafted. Go, go to an antique mall. You buy something that you know, it, it is old and and you, you can't find it, you know, in, in a um, Walmart or so, or a Target or something like that these days. You'd be creative. You know, you don't, you, you're not a slave to, you know, um, cargo ships or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, don't buy anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do, do something else with your money. You, you don't, you don't have to, you know, run out and mindlessly buy gifts for people. Uh, especially for people who already probably have too much. 
Yeah, we stopped buying gifts uh, years ago, except for like now I'm a grandfather, so we're going to buy gifts for our uh, oh, grandchild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we, we told everybody years ago, let's just stop the, the whole, you know, gift thing. You know, we love each other. You know, we've given each other tons of gifts over the course of a lifetime. Let's just, uh, yeah. That, you know, that's, a, that's a good point. And I guess the best gift is actually your time. Yes. And your attention. Yeah. But, well, yeah, well, your time is your attention. And, and unfortunately, sadly enough, we can't buy any more of that. So <laughs> I, I oh. wish we could. <laughs> I, I would be spending a lot of money on it right now. <laughs> I have cats, too. We have three cats and two dogs uh, right now. You know, um, I, I, I had cats and dogs uh, growing up when I was a kid. Um, but, you know, the, since becoming an adult, I've always had a fairly challenging career, one that's not always, you know, nine to five. Um, right. And uh, I hate to, do, I would hate to do something like that to a dog bladder. Cats are different. You have a litter box and they, they go whenever. Um, with dogs, you either use piddle pads, you know, which I know some people do, or uh, they're just sort of at your mercy um, to let them in and out. And I, and I hate to, I would hate to leave an animal outside. Right. You know, especially in, you know, winter's coming. I, I don't want, you know, um, to, to leave them out in the winter months. And uh, cats have just worked better for me over the years. I, I love both. I, I love dogs too. Um, I never intended on having four. It just happened. It happens, um, yes. I adopted two and two adopted us. <laughs> so so we've got four yeah two our dogs are younger our cats we've had the cats for uh you know over a decade uh, mm-hmm. so they're like 18 and 16 and uh, 17 uh so those might not be the, the exact ages but they're in the high teens all of them and uh um we just had one recently die in the past year and we had uh, one by the past year too yeah um, so uh, uh, we decided as we're getting older too, because again, time and attention and giving animals the time and attention they deserve, that uh, we're not going to get any new pets. Uh, you know, let's devote all our time and attention to the ones that we have uh, remaining. Well, you know, um, I, I, I agree with that. Um, however, uh, something uh, every time I start thinking along those lines, uh, because two of our cats are older, um, they're, 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 they would, they're considered elderly, you know, you know by our veterinarian. Well, one's 15. The other is between 13 and 14. We're not quite sure because he's, he's one of the ones that picked us. Okay. So, so um, the other two are much younger. Um, they're uh, three and four. Oh, okay. Big gap. But, uh, Oh, huge gap, you know, huge, huge gap uh, between, uh, you know, among, among the four of them. But, uh, you know, a friend of mine a long time ago, um, my, the first cat that I got as an adult lived forever, and he passed away uh, when I was, um, you know, my late 30s, and I was just crushed by it, you oh, know, because I had this cat, had this cat forever, um, really attached to him. And a friend of mine uh, told you, kind of took me aside and told me that, you know, he said, they're only here for a short amount of time. And because I was saying, you know, I don't think I want any more pets. I, I had another cat at the time, but I was like, you know, I, this, this hurt too much. I, I think I'd yeah. rather yeah. not go through it again. And he said, you know, he said, you're here to take care of them. you know, And it's your duty to you know, go out and you. you not that you have a vacancy, but well, there, but there is you know, sort of at the same time, and, and it's kind of your duty to you know go out and find another one that needs a home. And I right. liked that. Way, I like that way of looking at it. Uh, but but I know I know what you mean about the passage of time. Um, my mother uh, lost uh, two of her cats. Uh, uh, they were both elderly, and they both passed away just within a matter of a couple of months of each other. And she went through this whole rigmarole of not wanting a pet, but you know she lives alone. She really needed yeah. something. She's yeah. living in the house, 
And uh, through my veterinarian, uh, we adopted, in, well, she, she was in on the process, but we adopted a three-legged cat uh, for her. He, he, was, he was a kitten uh, and something had happened to one of his front legs. We're not really sure what happened to it, but it had to be amputated at the shoulder. And he's got so much heart and he's, so he's, he's a lot of fun. He doesn't have any emotional baggage at all, like a lot of pets will. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, he's you know, just fantastic. And he, he's really added a lot to her life. You know, she's, I, I'm prepared to take, to take care of, you know, Augie the cat if something happens to my mom, obviously. But uh, he's really added a lot uh, to her life now. Well, and they, you know, and, they've added, and you know, pets do add a lot to your life and it's not something you can you really measure, but uh, it shares a lot of companionship and it's fun to watch their personalities uh, unfold. You know, it, ours do that you know, as we get older, too, but so do theirs. And mm -hmm. they have a lot of they have a lot of layers of personality. A lot of people don't really see that, I, I think, in animals, but they're they're as complex as humans, if not more complex. Um, I, I agree. And uh, um, did I ever tell, share with you my cat ghost story? No. Ah, I will share it now. Um, one of our cats, her name is Ghost. And mm -hmm. the reason why her name is Ghost is because before she became a physical cat, we had a, a ghost cat in Pennsylvania. So it was a cat that looked like a Siamese cat. Um, and but, but it wasn't a physical cat because we had cats then, but not one that looked like that. And when folks used to come over and stay at our home in Pennsylvania, they'd ask about the Siamese cat. So we would have to tell them that, yes, we have a Siamese cat, but no, it's not. It's, it, it was, you know, it came here in the house, you know, uh, and kind of adopted us, but it's not a physical cat. And then uh, after several years, one of our cats had kittens. And one of the kittens, even though she wasn't a Siamese, looked like the Siamese cat. So I, I called it ghost. And then because I used to interact with the ghost cat too, before it even learned to walk, when I'd call it, it would try to walk toward me. It would kind of like swam as it tried to walk uh, toward me. And uh, it never behaved like a kitten. It always behaved like an adult cat, even when it was like tiny. tiny. So we still have her and she's elderly now uh, too. Uh, but uh, she started off as a ghost. And uh, once uh, she grew out of kittenhood, she became totally black, you know, from being like a, mm -hmm. a steel point Siamese, she became totally black and didn't look very Siamese at all. Uh, but uh, when she was born, she looked like this ghost uh, cat and she responded to ghosts, which is what I used to call the ghost cat. And uh, anyway, that's my cat, cat ghost story. So she's like proof that there's a, an afterlife for, or, be, or before life for animals. Well, um, oftentimes when uh, a Siamese uh, will breed with, you know, a, a different, uh, it, it, whether it's an alley cat or, you know, another breed of cat, the kittens uh, often do turn out to be solid black. They're usually beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, 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 you know, because of, you know, the, how the Siamese, um, you know, bone structure is, you know, yes. especially in the cranium, uh, they're, they're just beautiful black cats. Uh, you know, I've never had a solid black cat that's i i've had practically every other color <laughs> over the years but i have never had that solid black cat and i've always wanted one. there were the one two of our cats are solid black and the other one uh freya she's a tuxedo cat so she has like a like she's I, a I, love, I love the tuxedos um yes. Uh, we had uh, the um, cat that I got when I was in college, uh, you know, Bosley, he was a tuxedo. And a few years after we got him, we adopted a tuxedo. Well, we fostered a tuxedo kitten for about 16 years. Uh, <laughs> she, she came to us as a foster and we after about a week, I was like, oh, let's just give it, give her a name. You know? <laughs> well, we, I guess it, I guess it wasn't a week, but <laughs> well, it wasn't a whole lot of time, but she came into the house under the theory that, oh, we're going to foster her and somebody will scoop her up. We did that with one of our dogs, a Chihuahua. We, uh, 
I'll put her into the house, like take care of her for a while. And uh, then by the end of the week, it's like, no, this is our cat. You know, no one else is going to get this uh, cat, uh, this dog, I'm sorry. And uh, she's been with us and she became my dog. So she hangs out with me and protects me from all sorts of menaces like passing trucks and things. And uh, I got to tell you, among our cats, I don't know that they have a favorite between the two of us. Um, they, they sort of work the room. Um, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, like Lily, my, my, our, our oldest cat, could be anyone's cat. She warms up to anybody who walks through the door. She's not aloof whatsoever. Um, so anybody who comes in the door is going to have to deal with her. Um, and anybody that, that, that comes to stay with us, like my friend Katie, uh, you know, came uh, back in the summer and Lily wouldn't have anything to do with me, but she was all over Katie. You know, as if you know, get me out of here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and um, the, the the other cats are um, they they sort of work both sides of the street with us. I, oh. I guess they I guess they know which buttons that they can push, you know, with either one of us to get them to get us to do their bidding, uh, which, which seems to be very easy for them to do. <laughs> Disturb, disturbingly so. <laughs> well, cats, cats kind of own you after a while, you know. It, it, they do. It, it's it's odd. It, they they get the whole master uh, pet thing twisted Backwards. around. But they're really good at training you too. Um, yes. So they're excellent at it. And th in some ways, there's a lot of commonalities between cats and dogs in that they provide companionship. They're excited to see you when you get home. That's always good, yes. Uh, but uh, whereas a dog sort of, um, most dogs think that they are lower on the totem pole than you are, and cats think that they are higher on the totem pole. Than everyone. And yeah, only cats, very true. When cats get clumsy, and then they, after they caught themselves in the clumsiness, they, they give the attitude that I meant to do that. Yes, like, oh, <laughs> I didn't fall. <laughs> yeah, no, I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of dignity. Um, uh, and, and they're not very self-conscious about it, which, which I find you know, uh, really intriguing. And I'm a Leo. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you, um, you know, ascribe to any uh, astrology. So, and I, I think I conform a lot, not, not 100%, but I, I conform a lot to Leo's typical characteristics. And you, in my own dealings with people, sometimes I find myself behaving kind of like a cat. <laughs> you know, in a way, you know, uh, you have to go into uh, situations with some self-confidence. And most cats have abundant, most house cats, oh. I should say, have abundant self-confidence. And that, that's what it takes to, to make it, you know, uh, these days. Even if you don't really have it, if you can just project the fact you that meant to do that, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you, it's it's not really that you have it. It's if you it, if it looks good, it is good. Um, and <laughs> that's that's sort of the way it is uh, with with cats. Um, they can make you think anything, and if they see if they perceive a weakness in you, God help you. Um, like it, whenever somebody, well, I, not too many people in these days come over to our house that don't like cats because there's so many of them. Cats, yeah. But if somebody does come into your house that you really hates cats, the cats are all over. Them. You know, right. They, they just come out of the woodwork, you know, and they're going to intimidate that person. I like that. I, <laughs> I think that shows a lot of chutzpah, you know. <laughs> Did you ever see a movie uh, like I love Cat People? Uh, no, oh, that's a that's great movie. movie. Yes, oh. great people. But there was a movie that was made by Trauma called Teenage Cat Girls in Heat. Uh, Trauma right. knows how to get <laughs> titles, but it, it was a low budget comedy, I guess, uh, about uh, an ancient cat goddess who still had priestesses, and the cats were like the incarnations or the children of the cat goddess, and. Uh, um, it, it was it, it was a funny movie in that they did like um, one of the cats who turned into a human was named Cleo, 
And uh, uh, when they asked her what her name was, because again, she was a cat until a few minutes ago, she was going, Cleo, Cleo, because <laughs> that's how <laughs> the person they care would call her. So they asked what her name, that's what she said. And they, they did all sorts of things. Then when when you, you thought nobody was looking, one of the girls was like licking her paws, you know. Uh, so that, that was, it was, a low, again, a low budget movie. I think it was whoever made it was their first movie, but it, it had more than its share of funny moments. Tra trauma movies are always a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman is, is just amazing. Is he still, um, are they still around? I used to, when I had my TV show, Trauma was on all the time. Um, that's, a good, that's a good question. I don't know if he has retired at this point. Um, and you know, uh, just in reading about independent filmmaking, I, I think it's it's gotten really tough. I mean, it's easy, it's cheap and easy for you these days to turn out a professional looking product because the technology is so inexpensive. Right. But trying to reach an audience, uh, I think, has gotten a, a hundred times harder. More challenging, there's, just, yeah. there's just so much competition. You know, people are bombarded from um, you all sides, you know, essentially. Yes. But you mentioned cat people. And, and um, I saw the remake of Cat People at the theater when I was in high school. The one with Susan Sarandon, Catherine Deneuve and um, David Bowie. And that, that, that is probably one of my 50 favorite films. Uh, yes, I do. It's, it's beautifully shot. Um, I, I, love the, I love the narrative uh, that's going on. And I, I sort of like, well, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to start talking spoilers here, but, but, but I like the transition of power that happens. I'll just leave it at that, right. you know, in the film, uh, which is the I crux of the film. The song too is very haunting and it stays with you uh, forever. Oh, you mean the the Bowie song or? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. That was a good album actually, uh, as, as a matter of fact. Every now and then, you know, music goes through your head. That song happens to go through my head a lot every now and then. And I, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about the hunger. I'm not thinking about cat people. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've gotten way off base. The Hunger uh, is a great film, but that's the one I was thinking of. We're, we're talking about the Nastasia Kinski. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Or the this the uh, the one from the early '40s is really good too. That's Some true. Yes. Now, that's a great movie. Um, but the I, I did see uh, Cat People in the theater uh, and uh, with Nastasia Kinski, and it is a good movie. I see. I like Klaus Kinski a lot. Um, yes, he was in some great horror films. Now he was also in. I, I don't know that he ever turned down a role. He was in like in theory just about anything. Um, but he was. He's his Dracula is just amazing. I mean, he's 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 got to be other than you know uh, Bela Lugosi or you know let's say Max Schreck from the original Nosferatu. Uh, he he's an incredibly effective Dracula in that late seventies uh, version that he turned out. I mean, just as creepy as all get out. Um, you know, he, so much so that it kind of you know, you know, chills go up your spine. Uh, you when you see him in it, yeah. I'm, and we've I'm, gotten far afield from Lou Ferrigno, <laughs> yes, we have, and, but that's okay. We have, we have, uh, yeah, but, we have some time though. Uh, but you, you know, um, if you look at Lou, <laughs> if you look at Lou's filmography, it's really impressive, yes, it is. Um, you, uh, so many people think that, uh, let, let's say that Arnold Schwarzenegger is sort of the, the king of the bodybuilder turned uh, actor. And, and I mean, he, he is, it, it's the truth. Uh, even more so than you know, Steve Reeves. Steve Reeves yes. did it for a few years and then was out, whereas Arnold kept it up you know, for a long true. time. Yeah. Um, but if you look at Lou's filmography, he's no slouch. I mean, he's been no. in, he, he's had, uh, you, he, he's been a regular in a couple of different television series. One uh, ran for a long time. One was fairly short. 
Hulk, the Incredible Hulk. He did, yeah, he did uh, uh, 80s Peplum, uh, which you didn't you see that much of, uh, except for, you know, Arnold and Lou. Uh, and he, and I like his Peplum films. Uh, Me too. Even his his, Her his uh, Hercules movies are, are lots of fun. Uh, I loved uh, The Seven Magnificent Gladiators. Uh, it, it's a, it, that's a great movie. And, and I, you, I looked it up on IMDb, and I was really disappointed when I saw IMDb's rating of it because it's a lot more fun than that. It's way more yes. engaging than, than 3.7 or whatever it is. And I, oftentimes, I think people just log in and and uh, you know, state their opinion before watching something. It, just because it it wasn't, you know, a one hundred million dollar production doesn't mean it's a bad movie. And it, it, it's not a bad movie. Actually, it's very engaging. It's a lot of fun. There's always something going on on screen, um, and the music's good uh, mm -hmm. and well done. And uh, I didn't realize it until I started preparing for you know tonight's episode. But I, I did not have a bought copy of Hercules or or the second uh, Hercules film that- The Adventures uh, of Hercules, yes. Right, <laughs> uh, that Lou Ferrigno did. So I logged into Amazon, <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> I logged into Amazon and ordered a copy. It's gonna be here tomorrow. Uh, it's, I wanted Blu-ray, but um, the version I bought is, it's been around for a while and it's got both movies you know both movies i have that version too and and to tell you the truth um with up conversion and uh how good things look now even a standard dvd looks pretty good to my eye i'm probably not going to be able to see a whole lot of artifacts or anything that i that i shouldn't see there so it'll be fine it'll be good enough for me um i i was shocked that i I, I have a copy of Lou Ferrigno's Hercules, but it's one that we transferred from a um, video cassette, a, a VHS video cassette, uh, 18 plus years ago. Um, wow. And we transferred it over to DVD and it was dated like uh, April two, 2003. So I couldn't believe how old it was. It actually looked good though. It was letterbox. It wasn't pan and scan. Uh, which was nice. Um, it, it's eminently watchable, and our copy of Sinbad uh, is also was also done around the same time. <laughs> uh, but it's also you know, a good copy of it. Uh, yes. the, tra the transfer from VHS to DVD doesn't look the eighteen plus year old transfer. I should say doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, I have Sinbad still in VHS. I don't think I ever got Sinbad on D uh, DVD. Um, but uh, I, I enjoyed uh, his films a lot. And I liked the fact that he was in uh, sword and uh, sorcery movies beyond uh, Hercules. He was in uh, the TV show Conan the, Bar Conan the Adventure with uh, Ralph Muller. Yep. And uh, he was also um, in Scorpion King, one of the Scorpion Kings. Uh, Proving I had a part in that as well. That's right. One thing that I found really interesting that I had forgotten about uh, in Sinbad is that Daria Nicolodi, who um, is the mother of Asia Argento, um, and her father is Dario Argento, uh, you know, the famous uh, uh, Italian horror director, uh, is in it, and she's the narrator uh, of it, uh, which is kind of odd. You know, Dar uh, uh, Daria. Nicolodi was uh, in a lot, a number of Dario Argento's films. She's usually the heroine. And good actress too. She uh, sadly passed away last year. She was only 70 uh, mm. when she died. Uh, but it was odd to see her pop up you know, as the narrator in Sinbad. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, uh, really. Uh, it's almost a little out of character uh, for her because if you watch her films, I mean, she's in some really gritty, you know, horror films, and you know, she's you know, sort of telling a, a fable, you know, to her daughter to try to get her to go to sleep, you know, um, uh, in Sinbad, and it's just an unusual uh, characterization for her. It's an odd role to see her in. It's fun though; I mean, it, it's interesting to see. And, and Sinbad's, a, you know, a fun movie. Uh, yes, it is. And I don't think. 
think that Lou uh, gets enough credit. Uh, he's really good in his roles. You know, when I was a kid uh, in the late 70s on, I believe it was Friday night, uh, CB, the CBS lineup uh, was kind of everything. And, and the first show in the lineup was, um, I think it was The Incredible Hulk. It was The Incredible Hulk and then uh, Dukes of Hazard, and I think finally Dallas. I think that was the the, the trilogy for Friday oh, night. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I started at eight o'clock. Uh, I always, I, I never missed The Incredible Hulk. It, it, that's such a fun show. Bill Bixby, yeah, he was awesome. Um, yes, he was. Yes, yes. But Lou d d does an incredible job uh, in the series. And, and it used to be on MeTV, you know, a number of years ago, uh, which is a, um, a syndicated uh, network um, that has really you know, come into prominence over the last 10 years or so. It's primarily, uh, you, you can get it on, on cable or, or satellite, but um, it's also a back channel on a, for a number of um, you know, local uh, television stations that still broadcast. We have we have one in our local area in in Bridgeport uh, that broadcasts me TV and we can, we pull it in on our antenna. I don't know if I can get that here. I'm sure with everything. Uh, oh, you, you're in you're in New Jersey. You're in civilization. Uh, you, you can you can get me. I'm sure you can get me TV. I'm sure. I will look for it with with an antenna. Uh, Sven Gulli is on me TV. And he's he's the you know the horror host. Um, me TV also, if you're into uh, old cartoons, uh, they have a, a show on Monday through Friday from 7 to 8 uh, a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time called Tune In With Me. And they show uh, old rare cartoons uh, that you don't often get to see. Uh, a lot of it's uh, Merry Melodies, you know, Warner Brothers Looney Tunes. Uh -huh. uh, some of them are the old Pink Panther uh, cartoons, from which were so, which were very intellectual, you know, so much fun. They show old Popeye um, cartoons from the 1930s, the old Flesher black and white. Yes, Betty, I love those. Betty, Betty Boop, uh, which is a blast to see some of that. They, sh they show a lot of the old, um, uh, <clears throat> golly, uh, uh, MGM uh, cartoons, which were Tom and Jerry, Droopy Dog. I, I grew up in all those. I remember mm -hmm. those, those were some cartoons. I have to check into me TV. I know we get uh, somebody I know. Uh, uh, actually, uh, um, my friend who makes the movies, uh, he's into Zvenguli. and uh, so I know if he can get it, he's like a few towns over. I could definitely get it. So I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah, you'd be surprised what you can uh, pull in with. Uh just your a basic antenna. I mean, I, I've got uh, a digital antenna in the attic um, just because it was it was easier to mount it in the attic than it was to for me to, you know, for, for my, it, well, I mean, I, 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 I bought the mask to do it. I just never did do it. I guess I'm lazy. Um, but even in the attic and the terrain here, you know, we're, we're in the Appalachians. The terrain here is kind of rough. Uh, I can pull in every major network Oh, awesome. Uh, and the, the picture quality is at least as good as it is on Dish or streaming, maybe oh, even wow. a little bit better. Uh, the picture quality, it, it's not like it was when we were kids and you would have to watch a television show or a movie with, with static or, or snow, you know, <clears throat> or be, be at the mercy of you know, what the elements were like um, you know, with, with your antenna. Uh, with 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 digital uh, television, it either works or it doesn't. The room you described that you built in your house, I I want that's one of my ideal rooms. When I designed my ideal house, uh, I have a room just like that. So <laughs> it was good to hear that you've done it, and uh, may, may I get around to doing it someday soon as well. But when I did it, I never dreamed that Bluetooth was going to become a thing. So <laughs> I just, I ran all the, I painstakingly ran the wires through the walls. And you don't know how difficult it was and how much I swore while I was doing it. Um, and it, it, it was very difficult to do after the fact, you know, especially the ceiling uh, installation. 
uh, you know, for for the mid range uh, sound. I, 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 you could probably still hear me swearing downstairs just from echo alone. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it sound the sound is just amazing. Um, it, it's, it, 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 it's it's incredible. Uh, it sounds so much better than what I get at the theater. You know, we have a Regal theater <clears throat> that's a, just a couple of miles uh, from where we live. It's a nice theater, and uh, I, I love the selection that they have. But the sound is awful. And maybe it's just my ears too. I, I don't know. But but the sound, I can. There's always a part of the soundtrack that just never makes it. Uh -huh. uh, for me, yeah. And I'm struggling to listen to the dialogue because you know the ambient noise or the soundtrack is just sort of overwhelming the dialogue. I hate that. And my set, my setup downstairs is perfect. <laughs> I, I can tailor it to, to whatever I want it to sound like. And you, know, if I want more bass, I can just turn up the subwoofer uh, to the point That's where awesome. they, to the point where everything rattles. And it didn't even cost much. It, it's just it's just going through it. But now you've got Bluetooth speakers. I mean, that's easier to do, but I got to say the, the the old school wired hardwired speakers. I still think sound better. You can get way more bass out of them than you'll ever get with Bluetooth. Sounds so important. Something to keep in mind when I uh, plan and execute my own uh, uh, in-house uh, theater. Um, before we wrap up tonight, there's a couple of things that are floating around in the air, and I wanted to see if you were interested in them. Uh, remember we did a show with uh, George Helmer and Dave Dowling about Steve Reeves? I do remember that, yes. Um, I had promised them a Zoom show. Uh, now that we're doing Zoom shows, would you like to be a part of that? We're, I mean, the oh, I'd love to. Coordinate that. Okay, great. And uh, uh, talking about Lloyd gave me nostalgia. When I had my TV show and then my podcast after the TV show, um, Troma was a very frequent, uh, you know, Lloyd was on the show a lot. Uh, Lloyd, we had to put adult warnings <laughs> on the shows because a lot of the things that he said. Uh, but uh, like when I had my TV show, Kabuki Man and the Toxic Avenger were occasional guests on my TV show and, you know, and, and so forth. So um, that, today's conversation made me nostalgic for that. So if Lloyd's still around, he's still doing the trauma thing. Um, there's a chance I'll be able to, you know, to to get them on interviews uh, periodically. Uh, so would you like to be part of those uh, interviews as well? Oh, well, most definitely, yes. Okay, good. Something to look forward to. Brian, thank you so very much. I enjoyed our conversation. I always look forward to it. Uh, you never disappoint. Uh, I had a great time. Um, how can people find you and the drive-in theater? It's very easy to find the drive-in. Uh, just go to your favorite um, search engine and type in Brian's drive-in theater. I'll pop right up. And if you want to interact with me on social media, Facebook is the best way to do that. And just search for Brian's drive-in theater and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter, but I'm not, I'm, I'm more of a lurker on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I don't really post a whole lot these days. And Twitter, I think, is a, oh, a social media platform that maybe has seen its best days. I think Instagram, Snapchat, that seems to be the way things are going. I'm not even there yet. I, I'm also lurking on Twitter and playing with Twitter and, and LinkedIn and a few other ones, but uh, uh, none of them... I, or I haven't been able to open myself up to the possibilities, I guess. Uh, but I'm not finding them effective tools for what I'm doing and what I want to do. Well, you know, uh, not all social media is created equally. Um, some of the, I, I think Facebook is actually best for what you and I both do. Yes, I agree. Quite honestly, because it, you, you, your ability to add content is almost infinite. And you don't have that on Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, TikTok or um, Twitter, you just don't have that, it, and um, nothing is evergreen because you know everything goes away, right? So quickly, you know? and if I've spent this much time on it, by God, you know I better go back and be able to see it a, a couple of years later. I don't like things that just magically disappear. Nor do I, uh, but I've experienced that recently, so it's well, really that, 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 that I, I don't like that. 
Thank you so very much. Have an awesome uh, day. Have an awesome rest of the week and awesome weekend. And I will talk to you very, very soon because we have retro sci-fi cinema coming up. And That's then right. Our okay, be well. well. Thank you so much, Hercules. Have a good evening. Thanks. You too. And let's see if I click on the right button here. Yes, I clicked on the right button.